Welcome once again, everybody. Boyd here with you. This is part three of our MPC 22-inch Space 1999 Eagle build. We left off in the last video with uh, where we were working on these cages here, the front and the rear. And so I've been able to do a little bit more work this week. I'm just kind of taking my time, like I said, working nice and slow. But I got um, all the details done on these. We got the inner and outer structures added. A bunch of tubing you're going to be uh, putting in. Again, you want to pay really close attention to the... Um, instructions because you've got certain ones that go in certain places there's a couple of them that are slotted that fit around the little um, extensions here for the landing gear pods so you want to make sure you pay attention to all that but uh, it all worked out really good everything's fitting together i worked on a nice flat surface and made sure to keep everything nice and square and i've just got these temporarily attached onto the spine right now that i did earlier because i wanted to make sure everything was going to be um, fitting great and you know having no issues with any anything being crooked or anything like that so it's all working out really good so far um, we did that little bit of pre-shading with our black first on all these parts and then painted over it with our uh, wicker white and that gave us some kind of nice shadowing and everything and then we did that wash on these inner cages and everything and you can see that really makes a difference you guys everything in here um, you know it has a lot more depth and it doesn't look just so stark and white and gives it a lot more um, of a realistic look now, I'll show you guys probably in the next video, we've got a lot of detail work to do on this, and I'm probably going to be doing a lot of that um, before I go any further on the assembly. We've got this uh, really beautiful decal set that I talked about that just came out recently from round two. This has four full pages of uh, markings and all kinds of cool stuff. And uh, I've been doing a lot of looking at the uh, filming miniature, the original surviving one, and you got all these stripes and everything that wrap around um, various parts of the framework here on the spine and some of the other areas and while the model is kind of out in the open like this and i can easily work on it without every you know having to pick up the whole thing i'm going to go ahead and start putting a lot of that down so in the next video we'll show you a lot more in depth about that decal set and uh how it's all working out for that i've been continuing on working on some other stuff here i've got these um landing gear pods done now i want to talk about this real quick too because um this is another area that you really want to pay close attention to on the instructions you can see they've got these laid out here uh, part of it's kind of folded on the other side but you can get the idea you want to pay really close attention to where all these panels go when you put these pods together and i started off with this one here which they call the port front the port rear starboard rear starboard front so the orientation of these panels is um you want to make sure you get that right because that's you know they've done that studio accurate to the original filming model there's certain shapes and everything that are supposed to be in certain places so make sure you pay attention to that and you'll be just fine um, there were a couple of small little gaps in those here and there it took a little bit of uh putty work nothing major at all just kind of filled those in and and uh, sanded everything smooth and then we did the same thing with our um, black paint first and then our white over the top to give it that kind of appreciated look so those are all looking good and all ready to go we got a lot of this uh, detail uh, we're going to do a little bit of a wash on these as well and then we're going to put a lot of those decals that I just talked about go on these areas too and I'm going to do all that work before I actually you know stick them on because it's a lot easier to work with them like that I've also been working over here on my um, engine bells and I'm using this uh, really nice uh, rust-oleum chrome effect and um, i've used this before and shown it to you guys this is some really good stuff i've tried a lot of the um the different kind of metallic paints that are out there and um, this stuff you know dries pretty decent it, it takes a good three or four days before it completely dries but you can see it gives a beautiful effect this looks every bit as good as the um uh you know expensive aluminum bells that you can buy it looks really beautiful and um you don't have to do with this to get this look you don't have to do any type of um uh, black painting first these were just regular primer and I painted right over that and you can see you get a beautiful finish on that and uh, it looks very realistic we're painting the inside of them black and kind of starting to work that out so that's all coming along really good now the next step that I wanted to move on to is going to be the the actual landing gear as you guys know this model has a really cool uh, articulated landing gear setup just like the filming miniature you got these kind of collapsible arms here and a spring and some other cool stuff now I've been working on a few things to modify this a little bit that I think will help you guys out and uh, make it work a little bit better that I've kind of been figuring out here so I wanted to share that with you guys so we'll head over to the bench now and check that out and be right back with that 
Okay, everybody, we're back over to the bench now, and we're working on our little uh, articulated landing gear. This is a really cool feature on this model kit. You've got this really nice little kind of elbow action here as the uh, eagle touches down and lifts off that's accurate to the original TV show. Now, the way that they've got this out of the box is they've got this kind of um, clevis and socket set up where it's a pressure fit. you got these little recesses in these parts, and you're supposed to kind of snap it together, and then, you know, that gives you your action there. Well, I was looking at a couple of different videos on YouTube of, of people that have built this kit, and they mentioned that from time to time they have problems with these popping apart and everything. So I really thought about, you know, trying to come up with a way of trying to avoid that. So I wanted to share this little uh, kind of gimmick that I came up with here that might work for you guys if you want to try it. It's really easy to do. But uh, what I basically did here is I took my little pin vise, and I drilled through all of these because I wanted to put a pin in each one of these. Now, instead of using a little metal pin, I just took some um, uh, 0.75 fiber optic, which is actually really a nice little tough material. And um, that's going to be my actual pin here. So what I did is I drilled these out, and then uh, I took my Dremel tool, which I'm going to show you the process on this last one right here, and I'm going to shave off these uh, these little details on the top side here, which are supposed to be a part of the you know assembly because we're going to replace that with our fiber optic now. So I'm going to first start off by uh, going to my, real, my, my lowest setting on my Dremel tool here, slowest speed with a little sanding drum on it. And I'm just going to take and remove that surface detail there until these are flat. The reason I'm doing that is that um, we're going to replace this detail with our, with our fiber optic here. And we also want to have a nice flat spot to... Uh, work with when we start drilling through this with our pin vise. So I'm just getting this removed here and making that nice and flat. Okay, just like that. Then we'll take a little bit of our sandpaper here and just kind of clean that up a little bit more and make sure we get rid of the scratches and gouges from our Dremel tool. Okay, looks pretty good. Okay, so that's cleaned up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and snap this in place. What I've done is I've already drilled through with my um, with my pin vise right here. I've drilled through this little socket. I stayed right in the center and just drilled right through that. I couldn't tell you what size bit this is. I'm assuming it's a metric 0.75 uh, or a, I should say a standard 0.75 because we're using 0.75 fiber optic and it's exactly the same size. When you drill the hole, the fiber optic fits in there, but it fits nice and tight, which is what we want. So I've got that set up. Now we're going to go ahead and snap this in place. You want to pay attention to this part too because this, this boxed in side here, you can see it's open on that side and boxed in on that side. The box goes to the outside so that this can fold properly. So I'm going to, I'm going to snap this in place first. It's kind of um, a tight fit so you want to work with it. Don't try to force it too much. Okay, we got that on there. And then we're just going to kind of move it around back and forth a couple times to get it loosened up a little bit. Okay. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill through this whole assembly. And I'm going to just get right where I know that that, uh, you know, original spot was that we just removed. Which is kind of right in the center because we want to go through the center of this entire thing. And just start it turning real slow. Focus on keeping it straight. And we're just going to drill our way all the way through this. Make sure that that's on there straight, which it is, okay. Okay, I went through the center, I can feel that. Now, if this thing starts to go crooked on you when you um, reach the other side and start putting pressure on it, what you want to do is make sure you hold it straight. So I'm going to go ahead and do that like this where you guys can see it. Turn it real slow. Take your time, don't try to force it, you know, force the drill bit to come through. That'll kind of make you go off center a little bit. Okay, and we just pop through the other side. I'm just gonna run it back and forth a couple times to kind of clear it out a little bit. Just like that. 
Okay, and so we made it all the way through there, and we've got our, you know, it still works just like before, but um, we've got a hole through it. So now we're going to take this fiber optic, and to uh, make a stop on one side, we're just going to take our lighter here and, and just do this. Same way you do when you're doing lights. You know, you want to dome this little uh, end of the fiber optic. You don't want to stick it completely into the uh, flame. Just get it close enough where you see it, the end of it kind of mushroom over a little bit. And then we're going to push this through the side that we have it melted. It'll slide right through there for you, just like that. I want to pull it all the way tight, just like that. Okay, I'm going to keep my thumb on it so it doesn't move, and I'm going to clip it off, leaving just a tiny little bit of that sticking out, which I don't know if this camera will, will focus that small, but just a tiny little bit there. So now I've got my solder iron, and I've got this turned down as low as it will possibly go, and we're just going to... We're just going to melt it. We can't do that with the lighter this time because we'll melt the plastic around this, but we're going to just take the, the tip of our solder iron here and we're just going to gently work that down until it kind of, you know, mushrooms over like that. And then we've got our pin locked in place now where that pin cannot fall out from either side. It's got a head on both sides of it. So now we can slide this back and forth just like before. And we, know, we don't have any issue whatsoever of worrying about... Um, the you know this ever coming apart on us which is what we're trying to achieve here so that worked out really good so we're going to continue on now we're going to take this one here the kind of middle part and snap that in place let me get this stuff out of the way here and uh repeat the exact same procedure here now i've already pre-drilled uh, pre these like i talked about so we, we're good there I'm going to make sure I, um, of course, I've lost my fiber optic here. But we're going to go ahead and drill through this for you right now. Same process, just want to be really careful. Get your drill bit right in the center there where you know it's going to go through the entire assembly. Right in the center. Just start turning it real slow. Okay, I can tell I went through the... The first part now I might make it a little bit easier to clear these uh, shavings out of there before I go in the rest of the way in so now the part when you hit the other side you want to make sure that you don't push on it too too hard and spread the thing out a little bit where it'll um, you know the, the the center of the hole will, will go off center so you want to be really gentle when you do this and just like I said turn it really slow and it'll eventually pop through and you'll be good to go Just like that. Okay, we'll run it back and forth and clear it out a little bit. Okay, and as usual, I've lost my fiber optic. It probably fell on the floor, but you guys get the idea. We'll be doing that same thing again. We'll be heating up one of it, pushing it through, and then using our solder iron to clean that up. The last one that we'll do is when we actually attach the foot part on there, we'll do the same exact thing. So. I might show you that step when I actually get to it. I'm still painting those, and I don't want to put all that together until a lot of the other structure is done. But here's another part that I wanted to show you guys. Um, these are the actual uh, strut that comes down through and attaches to the landing foot. And in the instructions, this is you know this is called for to be painted silver. Well, I realize that as these are going to move back and forth. Uh, over time, all that silver is going to get scratched off of there. You know, the model probably won't get moved a whole lot, but every time you do do that, it's going to scratch it off. And, you know, because most silver paints are kind of soft to begin with. And I really didn't like that idea. So um, and I figured after a while, it would probably, you know, when the paint was scratching off, too, it would probably start to get this all gummed up and everything. You know, so what I did here is I had some of this... Um, the silver, it's similar to uh, bare metal foil, but I buy this at Hobby Lobby. It's just a kind of like a, uh, you know, like a, a filament type thing, uh, a, you know, like a chrome material that's really thin. It comes with a sticky back on it. You can buy this in a really big roll for really cheap. Um, you know, it doesn't conform to like really, uh, you know, complex shapes and like and, and things like that, like bare metal foil will do. Uh, so you can't really use it for anything except stuff that's pretty flat and stuff like that. But it's a lot cheaper than bare metal foil, so I, I keep it around here for, you know, different different things. Well, so what I did here is I just cut out a length of this to match. 
uh, the width of this thing here, and then I just started wrapping it around when I got about, you know, one and one quarter way around, I just stopped and took my hobby knife and just cut it off and then just finished it like that. And um, I was worried it was going to be a little too thick once I got it fully wrapped, but actually there's plenty of room to spare here. These probably would have fit actually pretty loose um, without that on there. And the nice thing about that is, is now we don't have to worry about this ever getting marred up or scratched or anything. Now, if you think this looks a little bit too shiny, like too perfect, you can just take some steel wool and scuff this up a little bit, and it'll look more like regular you know, steel or whatever, which I'll probably do, but you can see how nice and smooth that slides on there. This has a really slick, uh, smooth surface, so that's going to make these work really nice. And again, we won't have to worry about that, um, you know, that, that, that color coming off there over time. And uh, as I talked about, what we're going to be doing here is, once I get down the road a little bit, we've got these springs that go up on top, and this gives our action. Well, a lot of that depends on how heavy the model's going to be. So I'm going to be having a battery inside the um, the center cargo compartment, you know, for all, where all my wiring is going to come together. There'll be a, a switch in there, a couple other things. So that'll add a little bit of weight. But I'm going to play around with the springs for this a little bit because what you want to have happen is when you set this down, you want to have this come down just a little bit and not be... Uh, completely, you know, all the way up like that. The model had a really cool effect in the show where it kind of moved a little bit like that. So we want to make sure we get a little bit of movement when we pick the model up and set it back down. And uh, that's all going to have to do with how much tension we have on these springs. I understand that these springs are a little too strong um, right out of the box. So I have a couple different ways of uh, maybe addressing that. We may cut a couple coils off them and then stretch them a little bit. Or we may uh, use some heat to take a little bit of the temper out of that uh, spring steel and see if we can soften them up a little bit. We'll we'll see what we come up with, but that's for a little bit uh, further down the road, you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this little update, and I hope this little um, uh, pinning trick uh, works for you guys if you want to give it a try. It's not that hard to do at all. Like I said, the hardest part is the drilling, and just make sure you, you know, maybe use your magnifying glasses or whatever you need to do and just get right down on there and just keep it centered and keep it straight and take your time, and it'll work out just fine for you. And this will, you know, avoid that problem of, of this coming apart. And once we paint all this, this will look back the way it was originally. These little, uh, you know, uh, ends that we made on these on these uh, fiber optic pieces here will look just like the um, original detail that was there, pretty much. So it all worked out pretty good. Okay, you guys, I hope you enjoyed the update. We'll be back again with another uh, real soon here. Like I said, I'm just going nice and slow on this build. It's a lot of fun so far. We'll see you next time, everybody, and take care and happy modeling.